Hello everyone, my name is Terry Duchatel, and I'm going to show you guys how to take an Android app, in this case a very simple one, and instrument it with the Citrix MAM SDK. And that's going to give you rich, powerful control over the app and really lock it down and secure it for your end users. So to first kind of like demonstrate what we're going to be modifying, I'm going to take this existing uh, code here, and it's essentially just a web browser. And you can see um, that I'm going to click on launch and it's going to go ahead and start the um, basically a, a web view to the Citrix.com website. So pretty straightforward. If we look at the code um, inside of activity, you can see it's just a, a text field with a launch button. And then when you do that, it launches this um, web view activity and it really is just a web view. If you take a look at the code, it doesn't get much simpler than this. In the on create, we um, hook up that text field. And then if you click on it, we actually launch the web view activity. And then in the web view activity, all that we're really doing is we're just loading that URL, right? Very, very simple, straightforward stuff. So what I'm gonna, like the best way to show you how to do this is to actually go into developer.cloud.com. And this is our website for development. And it's gonna, um, it has all the documentation on how to use the Citrix MAM SDK. So you go to Citrix Workspace, Endpoint Management, Mobile Application Management, and today we're doing Android Native. And there's a lot of good information here. Obviously, getting started is where you're going to want to um, take a look. Now, we're going to um, skip ahead a little bit, and we're going to go up to setting up the library. And it talks a little bit about the different libraries that you, you know, we pulled in and, and so forth. And we're just going to walk through this step. Now, the very first thing that they recommend doing is um, to create a file called MAM SDK properties. Now this is optional. There's actually many ways to do this. Um, but to kind of like keep the code a little bit cleaner and so forth, um, they recommend just to, uh, to keep all of your properties separate and so forth. And uh, let's go through this really quick. So you have your library Maven, and that's because all of our SDKs are actually published as uh, Gradle and Maven um, libraries. And rather than use Maven repo, we're actually using GitHub as our Maven repository. And you can see in here, this is where all of our SDKs are located. And it's an actual Maven repository that you can use from Gradle um, and Maven package managers. In addition to that, we define a library tools section. And that's this part right here. We're gonna show you guys what that is a little bit later on. And then you need to specify the version that, um, to use of the MAM SDK. And then for today's, we're just going to use the latest version um, that's available right from here, right? And then finally, the package name. Now I'm going to use D Android Simple App, just to keep things simple. So let's go back to our documentation. And now, uh, we need to enter some key store information. Now, this is a step that you need to kind of do anyways, um, not necessarily this way, of course. And that's going to um, be necessary for signing it. And that is a required step, not only for eventual publishing, but also for um, generating an MDX file. And that's key later on when we um, go ahead and try to upload this to our Citrix endpoint management server. We're going to call this key store properties and just type in this information here. Now to keep things um, a little bit simpler, so I've showed you the, uh, the GitHub repo and that's just for our binaries. I should also call out, we have a sample app for the actual, um, this is like the official Citrix supported sample app. And then in addition to that, I also created an Android sample app. And this is what we're going to be using, what I'm going to be showing today. And it has a little bit of information to kind of make this a little, you know, a little bit faster for me. So for example, it has my key store information, my super secret password. The default key alias uh, is what I used. And then once again, um, this time it's the key password. Now, where would you normally get this information? Well, that's under build generate signed bundle APK. Now, in my case, it did a bundle. And you can see here are those four fields. 
So basically what you typed in there, uh, well, it actually creates the key store and then the other information is what goes in here. And we're gonna be using this um, a little bit later on as well. So now let's go into the build.gradle at the root of our project. And you probably have something very similar to this, right? So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be loading all of those properties that we just defined in those property files and making them available in this ext um, section from our root Gradle. And you can see, so we're loading the key store properties, the mammoth decay properties file, and then we're setting them to these, these variables essentially. So everything that we just entered in those property files is now available here. And the benefit, for instance, is maybe you don't want to put keystore.properties into your source control, but your build.gradle, you would, you would want to. Um, so let's move on. Obviously, one of the key things is to point to um, that Maven repository in GitHub. Otherwise, you won't be able to find it. Now, um, I'm sure this is known to you, but you don't want to add it to this dependencies. Uh, sorry, that comes a little bit later. What I meant was um, the repository section, you want to put it under all projects here. And this basically says, hey, there's a Maven repository at this location. So far, so good. Now the dependencies, we do need to add dependencies. And that's what I was referring to earlier. This dependencies, you want to be careful not to add it here because that's just for the build script itself. You want to go into the apps build.gradle and put it in, for example, right here. So what, we're, what we are saying is, hey, we have this mammoth DK and we're going to grab the version from that root Gradle file in the ext section and get it from this variable called name SDK version. And if you recall, we defined that all the way back in our um, name SDK properties. That was this guy right here. So that's how we're, we're leveraging that, right? So now let's go back to the build.gradle inside of the app. And you wanna be sure that your um, options are set to Java 1.8. That might actually be the default already. And if so, as in this case, there's nothing to change. Next, um, we need to make sure the application ID is defined and available. So um, let's see, I actually already have it defined right here, but you could just as well um, do this, you know, copy this uh, format as well. And this is all from, as you recall, the docs, right? Now we're gonna go ahead and sign it um, and a little bit more. So um, to keep things a little bit simpler, we're just gonna copy this code right here, stick it right over this part. What are we doing? So we're defining a configuration called signing configs. And we're saying that, hey, for debug builds, we're gonna use this. For release builds, we're gonna use this. Well, what are this? Well, it's saying, hey, the file is gonna be that key store path, the password and so on and so forth. And then that gets passed here. The signing config is um, basically, it, it tells the build system to go ahead and sign it with the uh, variables that are present and defined in these two areas. Now, um, you may have ProGuard, and that is the, the default for an Android project. And then if so, you're going to need to make some changes. And that's so that it doesn't obfuscate some of the things that we in uh, that we need for the Citrix MAM SDK. So you, you go into your ProGuard file, and you just copy and paste this information, right? Now, the next part um, is optional, but, uh, and it's, it's a plugin that allows you to download something. Um, and we're going to be using that to download the tool that we use, that we need in order to generate the, um, MDX. So we're just going to add it to our plugin section, as you can see up here. And you can see, um, that we're, you know, we're downloading version 4.1.1 and, and so forth, right? Now at the end of this, we're just going to append this code right here. And this is that generating an MDX file that I was referring to. So first we have to download the tool and it's using that utility that we had discussed earlier. Um, and it's downloading managed app utility that jar and it's doing so from our, um, the GitHub repo, right? And now we generate the MDX and this is a special file that adds some meta information about your, your APK, your app. And we're going to be uploading this later on. 
to the Citrix, man, uh, the Citrix endpoint management service, right? But you can kind of see here are the parameters and here are the inputs um, to each field and so forth. So we, we're not going to go into this in detail, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. Like here's the APK and we want to create an MDX file and, and so forth. So a little bit more we have to do. So we're going to go and modify the Android manifest file. And that is um, located in your source main, Android manifest. And basically we just have to add this. Um, and this one is inside the application section. So I'm going to put it right here. And that just says, hey, we're going to use this library. Now, if you're targeting Android SDK API 30, which you probably should be, uh, if, at least if it's a new app, then you're going to need to add this. Um, and this you add actually outside of the applications, just in the manifest section. And it's um, it's a, some new you know, protection um, that Android 30 requires and allows us to basically interact with some components inside of the Citrix Man SDK. All right, now this is a great time to do a sanity check to make sure that everything is actually building. So let's do a clean build and make sure that all of those changes, and honestly, we haven't even done any code changes yet, right? Um, and to see what's going on. So uh, there is an error and let's see, it says, um, hey, you are defining this application theme that conflicts with one inside of the auth manager library. Okay, and they even have a suggestion. Now you can do this. Um, you also have to add another um, uh, import. I'm going to kind of cheat and just do the very simple thing. And that is, I'm just going to say, you know what, I'm just going to remove my theme and um, use the one that, that comes with the library. So now let's do this again. And by the way, this and other useful information is in the troubleshooting section. And that was um, this guy right here, right? So we kind of go over, uh, and these were all, you know, um, issues that either we have found or that customers have already reported to us, right? So, and we're gonna be adding to this. So this troubleshooting section is one of many, I think, great tools and utilities to kind of help you out if you run into any problems. So we're gonna try building this again, and hopefully this time, we'll have more luck and we'll be able to actually uh, confirm that all of those build setting changes that we have made have not regressed our app in any way and that the app is still functioning just as it was before. Because keep in mind, we haven't actually modified any code yet. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna get back to right where we were in our documentation. Okay, this time everything succeeded. Uh, let's try this out. And um, let me set up my Android uh, environment here. I'm gonna run this once again. Right, okay, so we rebuilt it. Um, those changes, you know, I had already kind of installed it on this mach oops, machine. So now it's launching it again. You can see the theme change. Um, and if I launch it, it's doing just like it was before. So we've confirmed now that all those changes that we have made have not changed the behavior of the app, right? Those were just necessary build changes, but everything seems to be working great. So now we can go into the micro VPN library. There's really only one um, functionality, one main thing, that's the micro VPN library. And there's some code here um, that we can copy and paste. What I've done is um, for this specific webinar, I, like I mentioned, this is the app um, and we'll make this available to you. I have um, an even simpler way to kind of modify this a little bit and to make it a little bit easier to explain. So what I recommend is you create a tunnel handler class as um, a new Java class. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then you can just copy and paste. Well, I'm gonna just copy and paste this. And the way this works is the um, MAM SDK expects you to um, 
basically have a, um, a message handler. And that's what we're doing here. You can see the handle message that we have to implement. And um, we're just checking to see whether or not the, the micro VPN tunnel has already been set up. So pretty straightforward, but we haven't actually, you know, we don't have anything to call that yet. So the first thing we're going to do is go back to main activity and we're going to define um, a private member variable called MVPN handler. And we're going to um, actually define it as something that is defined in the main SDK. There we go. So if I look at my imports, you can see it's ComCitrix MVPN API, right? And that was automatically added. Um, but what we're actually going to do is, um, as you know, we don't have um, an MVPN default handler, and we created our own. So we're going to um, just copy and paste the code, stick it right here. So let's take a look at what we're doing, right? So we're creating that new class, or I should say we're instantiating that new class. We're setting it to this MVPN handler. And then we're going to um, call start tunnel in the micro VPN SDK class. So let me add the missing imports. And here as well. And you can see this messenger is actually built into the Android platform. And you can see the parameters. So we, we pass it this, which is the main activity. Um, and then we're passing it that um, message handler. But it doesn't quite like what we're doing. And one of the problems is this this tunnel handler part. And that's because we need to implement this. I'm just going to copy the whole thing. This part right here, that tunnel handler callback. So now that solved this problem, but now we're getting an error up here. And that's because we haven't implemented some required methods. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to copy and paste this. And you can see these are um, basically callbacks on tunnel started and on error. And I'm going to go ahead and once again, add the missing imports. And you can see that um, if the tunnel has started and this method gets called, then on the UI thread, we're just going to create a toast message that said we started the tunnel. And likewise, if there's an error, then we'll also um, handle that. So that's it. it's pretty straightforward code. Now, the last thing we have to do is modify the web view. And this is where really we're kind of starting to plug this in together. So if you look at my existing code, you can see the web view. We create a client. We set the web view client into the web view, and then we load the URL. So those parts don't really change. We're just adding one more thing. So I'm just going to copy and paste this section. Now, the part that we're adding is this right here. Enable web view object for network tunnel. So again, let me add in the missing imports. And we have a few of these. There you go. So now um, the compiler is happy, but the rest of the code hasn't changed. We still have the web view client, the web view sets it, we're loading the URL and so forth. So really all that we kind of need to do for web view, and this is for any web view that you um, manage and, and create, you need to add this caller. And then to do that, you need to pass um, some information, some fields. Um, pretty straightforward. And as mentioned, this is actually all really well documented in here, not only uh, Java doc style, but also sort of like a, a guide. So here's the enabling web view for tunneling section. And it goes over exactly what I had just covered. So this seems good. Let's try it out though. Once again, this is my Android device. We're going to go ahead and compile and launch it. Now already you can see failed to start tunnel. That's actually expected at this point. And that's because um, we don't have it running inside of a managed uh, environment. We haven't published this app in other words. So this is completely good. If I launch the app, um, we can see that, you know, everything is working. So we've modified the code. We're actually done with all of the code changes and we're now ready to move on.